The package of three reservations, five understandings, and a declaration proposed by the administration are appropriate and necessary. These RUDs ensure that the treaty will require no new federal laws and no new or revised state laws, that compliance with our own disability laws, including the definition of disability, will constitute compliance with the treaty, and the treaty will give rise to no new individual rights. These RUDs also ensure that ratification will have no impact on the federal budget and will maintain the sovereignty of the United States and the prerogatives of our states. Nothing in the treaty undermines U.S. sovereignty. By the terms of the treaty itself, the Disabilities, Disabilities Committee, which has been much debated this morning, um, is advisory only. Its suggestions, observations, and opinions are not binding and cannot compel any action in the United States. And if the treaty should be amended, any new amendments will not apply to the United States unless the United States specifically and formally consents to the changes. Nothing in the treaty itself also changes or undermines parental rights in the United States. In fact, I, the, the treaty recognizes the primacy of the family. It calls the family, and this is a quote from the treaty, the natural and fundamental group unit of society and says that it is entitled to protection and assistance. The reservations on federalism and private conduct ensure that parental rights in this country, which are established mostly at the state and local level, remain unchanged. These reservations are eminently reasonable and are compatible with the object and purpose of the treaty. And once included in the Senate resolution of advice and consent, these reservations will themselves become law.